As a browser engineer, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about uh, Project Fugu and, and also to use the opportunity to explain how we go from an idea to an API that actually ships uh, in Google Chrome. Uh, sometimes I get the impression that there is a um, separation uh, between browser engineers and web developers and that not all web developers are aware of how um, a new web API makes its way uh, into a browser. Uh, in case you're wondering um, who I am, hi, I'm Rafael. I was born and grew up in Brazil, but later decided to move to the other side of the world, which in my case was Finland. Uh, that's where I started working for Intel and where I lived for three years. Uh, I then decided to move again and have been here in the Netherlands for the past four. Um, at Intel, I have always been part of the same team, the Web Technologies team, and together with a few other groups at Intel, uh, we work on things ranging from Web GPU to the uh, V8 JavaScript engine uh, to Chrome enabling to web standards and, and pretty much everything uh, in between. These days, I work mostly uh, on the Chrome browser itself and its Blink uh, web engine, either by contributing to specifications or by implementing them uh, myself in the browser. It's not a brag. Uh, it's a polite way of saying that I'm better at producing the, uh, the tools that you guys use uh, rather than being able to, to build a website with all the latest, flashiest technologies and best practices myself. So I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get that view source ticket uh, at the end of the evening, rest assured. Uh, so before I get too ahead of myself, let me just describe how this presentation is um, organized. In order to stay uh, on time, I'll kindly ask you to ask your questions uh, at the end, especially as I'm going to address uh, some frequently asked ones uh, in the course of the presentation. But do let me know if I get uh, too carried away and start talking too fast. Um, I'm first going to give you some context on Project Fugu itself and uh, what it is, why we think it is important. Um, then I'm going to show you some of the APIs that are part of Project Fugu. And finally, I'm going to show you some pointers and resources that I, uh, in case I have managed to get you guys uh, interested enough in the things that I'm going to say. Right? Uh, so part one, Project Fugu itself. Uh, in order to, to get into Fugu, I actually need to take a um, step back uh, first. Um, I would like to believe that we're all here tonight because we love uh, the web. If your job depends on the web, it may be more of a love-hate relationship. I know the feeling. But let's focus on the love part for the next 20, 25 minutes. Um, the web is the uh, universal platform these days. It reaches um, all kinds of devices and people all over the globe. Uh, it's easy to use and share. There's nothing to install from any app store. You can generally uh, open any URL in your browser and feel safe that your device is not going to be compromised in any uh, mysterious ways. And over time, especially over the last five to ten years or so, the capabilities of the web have been growing um, quite a lot. So we've got Everything ranging from web components to geolocation to push messaging to service workers to WebRTC. Uh, we've been able to do more and more with the web, which makes me uh, quite happy. And in addition to those individual new APIs, uh, in the last couple of years, we also saw some uh, major um, initiatives, as I would like to call them. Who here is familiar with progressive web applications, PWAs? Right? Awesome. They're great. They blur uh, the line between a website and a native application. Your website can have a home screen icon. You can provide uh, an offline experience to your users. And it can just be treated like a um, regular native program by uh, your users. WebAssembly, WASM, very good as well. Uh, portable, efficient uh, bytecode for the web. It allows one to build C, C++, or even Rust uh, source code and generate a binary that's going to run on multiple browsers and operating systems. Uh, it's great for speed, portability, and also for porting your uh, legacy code base uh, to the web. Now, um, even if you take all that progress that we have made so far into account, the web uh, still has shortcomings compared to what a native app uh, is able to achieve. This is one of the things that drives people to Electron or Cordova or any other hybrid uh, or native uh, alternatives. Uh, I'm not bashing any of those projects, for the record. 
But what if you need to read or write uh, local files or access a user's contacts, share your data with another app, or even have your web app become a, a shared target uh, itself? This is what we call the um, app gap, which is the functionality gap between a web app and a native app. Which finally uh, brings us to, to Fugu. Project Fugu is a code name for this effort to, to bridge this app gap. We want to expose more native features to the web as regular APIs, so without any extra frameworks or libraries. I see Fugu as an initiative that is complementary to PWAs and WASM in advancing the web platform. It's an effort that's led by Google with uh, collaboration from Intel and Microsoft, and really anyone else who's willing to contribute code or uh, spec work. It's an open effort. We always try to have our discussions out in the open, and we avoid deciding anything behind closed doors. More formally speaking, uh, we want to enable web applications to do anything that native apps can, but we want to do it in a way that works with the web as we know it. So we want to respect and maintain the privacy, security, and trust of our users. So we're not suddenly going to start uh, exposing a lot of different powerful functionality to the web and start creating APIs that mimic their uh, native counterparts one-to-one. -one. Instead, what we want to do is uh, each gap that we identify goes through a strict process that can result in an API that looks very different but which hopefully uh, has a more intuitive uh, look to developers and offers a uh, smaller attack surface. That website over there um, links to a document describing in, in general terms the, how we usually approach uh, new powerful APIs and how we expose them to the web in case you guys um, are interested. And what, what exactly is this strict process that I mentioned before? Um, Fortunately, it's the same launch process followed by anyone who actually wants to launch a new feature in Blink and Chrome, uh, which also allows me to explain this process in more detail and hopefully um, demystify it, as I mentioned before. So how do we go from zero to shaping a new Fugu or any web API in Chrome? First of all, we identify use cases. This can be done by um, talking to business partners, clients, web developers at conferences, Google can check the usage data for its uh, Chrome Apps APIs. And in the end, we have a list of features that seem to be in demand. Now, for each feature that was identified, uh, the rest of the process is identical. Uh, we begin by writing um, an explainer, which is a short document where we explain what problem we're trying to solve, what the API that we want uh, would look like, uh, what the main use cases are, and what alternatives have been considered, if any. But it's, it's really a short and simple document that's passed around. Now, once we have uh, an explainer, we start asking for feedback from anyone that may be uh, interested, other browser engineers, spec people, potential users, uh, different teams in Chrome, for example, the security team, the privacy team, the permissions team. This is why the explainer is so important, because it's a concise document that states what we would like to do, and it's easy to really pass around to everyone. The explainer changes uh, according to the feedback, and we also, at this point, we can start uh, implementing the new API in the browser. So when I say implementing it in the browser, I definitely don't mean shipping it to users just yet. Uh, the new features are usually behind a flag, so uh, users need to go and change their browser settings uh, in order to, to enable them. This is by design. Uh, at this point, everything's really subject to change. Uh, the API is not set in stone, and things are definitely going to break uh, from time to time. So um, as we stabilize both explainer and implementation, we also want to turn that explainer into a formal uh, web specification that can be implemented by any browser. Anyone who has read a web, uh, web specification before knows that the language needs to follow a certain style. Uh, there are rules about what goes where. Uh, any algorithm needs to be specified in detail. This is what's going to guarantee that code using this API is going to behave the same across multiple browsers. Uh, we also gauge interest in the API and try to get other browser vendors uh, on board. 
Um, at this point, the new feature is still behind a flag in the browser, so users still need to go and change their settings to enable it. But finally, uh, once we have gathered uh, enough feedback uh, for the spec and the implementation and, and things really start to look more stable, we are ready for uh, wider testing. Features usually go through an origin trial process that I'm going to describe uh, in more detail real soon, uh, where web developers can provide feedback to us in an easy way. Uh, the closer that we get to the final steps, the more people are involved. Uh, there are privacy and security reviews from different teams at Google. And getting the final green light to actually ship this feature uh, takes time and effort. Um, after a while, usually at least a couple of uh, major Chrome releases, uh, and after potentially adjusting uh, the API and the implementation based on the origin trial feedback or feedback from anyone else, we can finally decide to ship uh, this feature widely to all users, usually uh, in all platforms that Chrome runs on. So Windows, Chrome OS, Linux, Android, um, Mac. iOS is a bit different because due to Apple's rules, Chrome on iOS actually uses WebKit and not Blink as a web engine. So uh, I said I was going to get into more detail about origin trials. How many of you are familiar with origin trials or have used it before? Yes, we have a <laughs> <laughs> one brave soul. Uh, origin trials are a way for web developers to start testing the APIs in the real uh, world and for us browser folks to get feedback from those uh, real world uh, use cases. So do you remember that? During most of the process that I described there, uh, each user that wanted to try out the feature needed to change something in a browser. At this point, we do something else instead. Users no longer need to change anything in their browsers, but web developers uh, change their websites to activate the feature. So web developers subscribe to an individual uh, origin trial and receive a token from Google. You can add that token uh, to a uh, meta tag or send it through an HTTP header. And then if Chrome launches a website and the token is there, Chrome's going to make that API available to users. But it's not available by default. You, as a developer, have to sign up and use that token. Does that make sense? Uh, the tokens are valid only for a uh, limited period of time, usually around six weeks, which is the time frame for one Chrome release to go from uh, stable to old stable. And after that, you can reapply to continue using, and we ask you for feedback. Did you like the API? Did it solve your problems? Uh, is there anything that you would like us to change uh, before releasing it out in the wild? Uh, this entire process is not uh, exclusive to Project Fugu, uh, so please take a look at that website over there uh, for more information. Your feedback as web developers is really uh, important and helps us determine if an API is ready or not, and whether there really is uh, demand for it out there. So this is a lot of theory so far, and I guess at this point um, some concrete examples uh, are going to make this uh, a bit more exciting. I'll take the opportunity to focus on some APIs that my team has been working on, um, mostly because I'm more familiar with them. Bear in mind that I'm going to mention some estimates for shipping and some deadlines, but they all have a tendency to slip. Uh, depending on feedback that we get from users or from Google's own feature review process. But let's try to be optimistic. All right, let's start with uh, generic sensors. Generic sensors actually predate uh, Project Fugu, but these days it definitely falls under the uh, Fugu umbrella. Uh, the idea is to have an API that provides access to low-level sensors uh, present on a device, so an accelerometer, a gyroscope, magnetometer, that kind of thing. In the past, uh, one could have uh, access to some of the data through the device motion and orientation API, but that API had its own uh, shortcomings. The generic sensor spec offers a simple API that provides simple primitives and just gets out of the way. So as you can see um, in the code snippet over there, um, you, have such, uh, where you have objects like an accelerometer. They are also event targets. So you can just define your event handlers, start the sensor, and you're done. Pretty simple, but easy to configure, and hopefully intuitive as well. 
Citizens API has actually been around for a couple of years. Uh, a lot of sensor types are uh, already shipping in Chrome today on all platforms. Uh, the main target for us uh, in terms of development uh, is ambient light sensor, which provides light readings to web developers so that um, people can, for example, change their website's color theme or even the contents based on how much light is available around a user's device. ALS is undergoing some privacy and security changes, always them, and we hope to have it as an origin trial um, in the next quarter. In the meantime, you can just enable that flag in Chrome flags and uh, start using it. I've got a, uh, a couple of links to, to demos, as well as a link to the main spec, uh, if you guys are interested. As for WebNFC, I'm not directly involved uh, in this one, but my colleagues are. So the name should be self-explanatory. Um, it allows web pages to use NFC to communicate with other NFC devices uh, when at close proximity. More specifically, uh, it allows reading and writing NFC tags using the NFC data uh, exchange format. The API, as you can see, uh, follows a similar format. You can create uh, an NFC reader, uh, subscribe to a few events, and start scanning. Contrary to most APIs, this one is currently available on Android, but we do have plans to, to expand it to other platforms as well. Uh, this work is a lot more recent uh, than generic sensors, so the spec still under, is still undergoing uh, a few changes, and so is the implementation. Anyone willing to try it on Android can enable that flag uh, in Chrome uh, for Android and start playing. Uh, we'd like to start an origin trial in the next quarter too, but that depends on a, a couple of things uh, stabilizing first. Uh, there's a link to a demo that one of my colleagues wrote and, and also a link to the spec, right? Now, I'm pretty familiar with this one because I have implemented most of the code in Blink. Um, the idea here is very simple. What if, for example, you are Google Slides or any other Slides application and you would like to prevent the screen from turning off while one's presenting? That's basically what a screen wake lock is. Um, the spec also defines system wake locks which prevent the, the whole page from being suspended or swept out. We do not intend to ship those right now for m a number of reasons. We're really focusing on screen wake locks for the moment. And as you can see, the API is also very simple. Uh, the example shows how to implement a timer that keeps the, 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 the screen on for 10 minutes. The actual wake lock call is only that call in line four. Uh, it returns a promise that does not resolve while the lock is held, more on that later. But even that is not necessary here, um, as you can see. The, the, the spec was actually rewritten by one of my colleagues earlier this year. Um, and I wrote most of the implementation. Until the end of last week, uh, my slides said that spec and implementation were pretty stable, but <laughs> us working uh, on or interested in wake lock actually got together at the end of last week to discuss some of the issues with the API, and we've been floating the idea of making the API more intuitive by changing it uh, once again, so it's not that stable anymore, but still, we would like to have an origin trial in Q4 as well. It's currently behind uh, that flag in Chrome flags. Now, this is pretty hard to demo because the definition of success for a screen wake lock is absolutely nothing happened to your screen. But uh, Thomas's demo here um, is a nice example. If you, ex if you enable that flag in your browser and go to that page, there's gonna be an, uh, an extra button uh, for you to enable uh, a screen wake lock there for you to take a look. And there's a link to the spec too. And finally, something that's actually easy to showcase, uh, so much so that instead of adding a code snippet, I've just added some animations with some of my uh, colleagues' faces instead. The idea behind the image capture API is to allow websites to capture um, images from a device's camera with control over the uh, picture settings. The image capture API first shipped in Chrome 59, so this is quite a while ago, my team has been implementing new features that have been added to the spec ever uh, since then. Now, um, I'm a layman when it comes to photography and, and camera controls, so I'm not familiar with all these terms, but I have been told that it's now possible to adjust uh, camera exposure, brightness, sharpness, contrast, ISO, and a few other things. 
And if you have a compatible camera, you can also use pan, tilt, zoom features, as you can see in the, the leftmost uh, animation over there. Um, pan, tilt, zoom is uh, still behind that flag over there, but pretty much everything else is already shipping uh, by default in Chrome today. The first link has uh, a lot of demos and samples that one of, uh, some of my colleagues wrote, uh, including some of them which use OpenCV.js and some WebAssembly to do some um, image recognition with those features. So if you're interested, take a look. And there's a link to the spec as well. Um, I think this covers a lot of ground, but these APIs are just part of the whole effort. Um, I have focused on some APIs that are closer to me, but there's a bunch of other things out there. Um, web Serial to allow talking to serial devices, Web USB, Web Bluetooth, local file access, badging for PWAs, uh, contact picker, barcode detection API. Um, I think there are more than 70 features that are currently being tracked as part of Project Fugu uh, right now. Not all of them are being actively worked on, and they have different priorities, of course. But this all actually leads us to our next section, which is how you can help. This is a little bit of an FAQ, but I think it's as important as the, the other parts. Um, an API without users is really irrelevant and a waste of time and effort. So your input, your feedback, and interest are really, really important to us. So let's start with what are the plans so far. Um, I mentioned some 70 plus APIs being considered. Um, the two links there uh, provide more information about them. So the first one is a spreadsheet uh, listing APIs, priorities, and estimates for shipping. It's actually maintained by Google. The second one lists uh, all the Chromium bugs with the project Fugu label uh, and allows anyone to look at individual uh, tracking bugs and check progress more closely. Some of the bugs do not have a lot of information, especially if no one has started working on them yet, but feel free to just ask for more information in case you're uh, interested. If you just want to learn more about these upcoming uh, technologies uh, and you would like to learn how to use them in your code, I also got you covered. The code lab link over there has a more uh, instructional approach and it, it teaches you step by step how to use some of the APIs that we have been working on. Secondly, the unlocking new capabilities for the web article uh, explains Project Fugu in more detail. And it also contains a, a, a video of a presentation from Pete LePage and Thomas Steiner from Google that covers uh, some of the content that I described here. I actually got some of my content from them. Um, they also demo some other cool APIs that are part of Fugu and that might uh, catch your interest. If there's any functionality that still isn't tracked by us, just don't be shy and let us know, right? That link takes you to the uh, Chrome bug tracker and it fills in some fields automatically so that your new bug is going to be triaged by the right people. It's not a guarantee that whatever you request uh, is going to be worked on, but it provides some guidance uh, for us and it helps us know which direction to go uh, in the future in terms of popular demand for, for features. <laughs> and finally, if you're that amazing person that wants to help us actually test things, first of all, thank you very much. The best way to do that is to get familiar with one or more of the APIs that actually interest you. Try to use it, provide feedback in the bug tracker. Um, you can also provide feedback to us in the specs directly. All you need is a uh, GitHub account for that. For example, so I was talking about wake lock earlier and I mentioned that the wake lock API currently returns an API, uh, a uh, promise that does not resolve while the lock is being held. That's not very intuitive. That's not how promises usually work. Um, so some spec bugs were filed uh, a while ago, and we discussed how to fix it uh, last week at TPEC, which is the annual W3C uh, standards conference that was held in Japan uh, this year. All feedback matters, and I hope to have made it clear to you guys that APIs just uh, don't fall out of the sky in perfect form and that web developers are just then forced uh, to use them um, in whatever shape they come. 
it's really a uh, two-way conversation which applies not only to Fugu APIs, but really to any web API. A lot of the process that I described earlier uh, applies to any API and it involves a lot of work with standards and with people who are not working on Chrome, with people from Mozilla, from Apple, and from anyone really who is interested in an open web, right? And with this, I thank you all for being here. Um, here's my email address if you need to find me. Um, you can also find me on GitHub or send me, an, uh, yeah, send me an email. Let me know if you've got any questions. I'm also going to be hanging around uh, for the rest of the event, so feel free to ping me later too. Questions? Or <laughs> thank you. Yes, sir? Uh, how are the concerns about privacy? Regarding, uh, privacy is. Yeah, if you don't mind repeating the question. Oh, yeah. So, how do we approach privacy when uh, developing these new features? I can, even though I'm not, I don't work for, from, uh, with Google or, or for Google and I just work with them, I can say that privacy is taken care of very seriously. Um, some of you ha might have seen the news uh, a couple of months ago some months ago about them launching a new privacy center, I think in their Munich office. There are teams dedicated to security, privacy, and permissions uh, working in Chrome. So before we can actually launch any of those features, those guys have to sign it off. So they look for any security issues that might come, privacy issues. Um, we're often forced to change the APIs or implement new things in the Chrome UI in order to, to make the API land correctly. So there's no one-size-fits-all approach, but each and every API that we intend to launch go through the same process of being reviewed by the, the right people and, and really listening to all their suggestions because they can block the whole launch process. Right? Yes, sir? So the question was uh, if this is, at least in the short term, a Chromium-focused uh, approach and how other browser vendors are, are seeing this. So I think in practice, it is a Chromium-centered effort right now, mostly because it uh, originated uh, from Google and we've got all these people uh, working on Chrome or Edge or any other um, Chromium-based browsers uh, sharing the same code base. But it's an open process. We, we do not uh, cut corners or, or take any shortcuts. So we go through this, the web standardization process. Uh, we just do not have a lot of control over whether Mozilla, Apple, or anyone else is going to implement those APIs. But even when they don't, at least immediately, we've got people from uh, those companies and organizations that are part of the standards groups. So they also provide uh, feedback all those changes to API and to wake lock, for example, originated with collaborations from uh, Mozilla, for example. Uh, I just don't have a, a, an answer to when or if they are going to adopt any of those APIs. But I, I can imagine that at least some of them are definitely not very um, controversial. Yes? Yes, sir? How do you uh, determine the, uh, uh, the priority of these uh, APIs? Is there a goal behind we want to replace native apps with that apps as much as possible or certain apps only? Or how do you prioritize all these APIs in the proposal? Right. So the question was about the how do we give the right priority to those all those 70 plus APIs? I don't have uh, a very good answer to that because a lot of the prioritization is actually done by Google and Google's uh, project managers and, and people who who manage different teams there and so I'm not entirely sure, but I guess some of it is related to how much demand there was for the, the, the feature. If uh, every feature needs to have at least um, one organization or one partner that is committed to shipping uh, this feature. So the more that they have, I guess, the, more, um, the higher the priority that those tickets get. But I don't have a, a lot of insight into how they classify that as P1, P2, and P3. Right? 
So, oh yeah. So the Baldi origin trial. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just wondering, so like, this is when developers subscribe and like uh, uh, unlock some browser features in their apps, right? So I'm just wondering what are the numbers? Like how many people are actually tracking the, uh, like this new edge a APIs and who are they? So um, that so the question was about origin trials and what what the numbers are and, and who's actually following that process. Um, the numbers are probably uh, visible to Google employees, but if we're participating in working on a technology uh, together with them, we might have access to um, some of the numbers at least. So I don't have any fixed or. or, or actual amount of numbers for the, the origin trials yet, but it's really part of the process for launching an new API. So APIs usually have to go through that process even if there's one person or two people who, who have uh, signed up. Uh, it's, we have to have this API or any feature really in Chrome uh, that applies to more than just APIs. It needs to be uh, field tested before being available to, to everybody. And there are dozens of different uh, origin, trial, uh, origin trials uh, available at the moment. Um, and I guess the Google DevRel people also do a lot of outreach um, to make people aware of these origin trials. There's blog.chromium.org as well, which announces um, new Chrome releases, especially when a new milestone reaches the um, beta channel. That usually also mentions new features, uh, origin trials, and things uh, that you should try out before a new release goes to the stable channel which is, uh, a couple of weeks after that. Right? And I think I'm two minutes over time already. So um, thank you very much. Otherwise, if you have any questions, just talk to me uh, during the rest of the event.